Journal Entry, October 18. It has been 11 days since I began my journey to discover the creepiest chord. My quest thus far has taken me to places I wouldn't wish on my worst enemies. And now that I sense my destination approaching, I'm beginning to question the wisdom of this journey, starting to believe that some secrets are best left undiscovered, lest they be the end of me and the rest of us as well. Not all chords are created equally. Some are just more inherently creepy than other ones, and composers can really use these chords to their advantage if they're looking to spook, startle, or scare their listeners. So in this video, I wanna give you six chords that are really unnerving and are very easy to use if you're trying to just creep people out. I'm gonna keep this pretty quick. I'm gonna show you the chord themselves, how they're built, and show you a few examples of how you might be able to use it. But let's just get started with uh, a really simple one, which is a minor flat six chord. I'll build it off of the note E. So an E minor chord is what we start off with, and that's just a minor triad, E, G, B. And if I add in the flatted sixth note, which is the note C, then I have an E minor flat six chord which is pretty uncomfortable. If I go back to it here, pedaling between an E minor and an E minor flat six, you can hear that's a really unsettling kind of sound. And this is the very first few chords you hear in Laura Palmer's theme by Angelo Badalamonte, who did Twin Peaks soundtrack. It starts off with just an E minor flat six to an E minor, to an E minor seven, to an E minor. Back to E minor six, back to E minor, and then just a low E like that really unsettling score and I think that theme song specifically I mean just starting you off with a minor flat six is a really great way to creep people out and it just gives me that haunted forest effect all the way throughout that song Next, we have minor add nine chords. And I just discussed add nine chords in my last video. So if you'd like more information on these, you can just check that out. But really all we do is we take an E minor chord and we add the ninth note or the second note, which would be the note F sharp. So if I can find a way to play an F sharp at the same time as my E minor chord, then I get this, which is E minor add nine. And hopefully you hear that's once again, got a lot of mystery wrapped up into it. I can add that down an octave lower like this. And now I'd say it's still kind of mysterious, but I feel a little bit more Western, right? Now that you're kind of down in that lower register. If I could add in that F sharp down to the low register, I'd get some really cool dissonances, but I can't do it on my guitar. Just check out what it would sound like on a synthesizer instead, playing an E, an F sharp, and a G right next to each other, and then having the fifth B on top. So I'd call that a minor add two, and a lot of times I like to voice my minor chords as add two because of that dissonance between the second and the minor third. And that minor step right there creates a lot of tension, and I personally love it. I think it works really well off of the one chord or off of the four chord in any natural minor key. You can play an add nine chord or an add two off of the one or off of the four, and you're gonna really darken up the mood, get a lot scarier than just your regular minor chords. Next, we've got minor major seventh chords. I did an entire video just on this one chord, so definitely check that out if you like the sound of this. But really, all you gotta do is take a minor chord, like E minor, and then find the seventh note. So the seventh note of the E scale is D sharp, and I'm just gonna tack on a D, a D sharp. And I get that, which is the detective chord. It's the spy chord. It's got a lot of mystery wrapped up into it. I don't think it's so spooky and set in like uh, scary. I think it's just more suspenseful. So it's a nice counterpart to all these other chords. And it's very, very easy to apply. Just take a minor triad, add on that seventh note, and there you go. Next is the augmented major seventh chord. And to build an augmented major seventh off of E, all I do is start on the note E, and then I build a major third, which is G sharp. Another major third would take me to the note C, and then I'm gonna go to the note D sharp, which gives me an augmented major seventh. And if I add in another E, then I get this lovely arpeggio. And hopefully you can hear, this is quite unsettling, undetermined. It's awkward, really awkward. It's like the state of suspended disbelief or suspended animation. It's kind of hard to get a grasp on it, but it just feels like endless possibilities but none of those possibilities are really that good. 
A lot of times, augmented triads feel awkward to me. So I kind of associate awkward, augmented. They just kind of have this floating question mark kind of feel. And just hacking on that major seventh gives it a little bit more color. Now the next chord is actually a chord change, but it could be any chord. So you can make any chord really creepy just by preceding it with a minor chord a tritone away. That might sound confusing, but this is really easy. Let's start on any chord. Uh, I'll pick uh, E minor, okay? If I'm on E minor, let's find the tritone off of E. And you can find a tritone just by moving over six half steps or six frets. So if I travel over six frets from E, it takes me to B flat. That's the devil's note, the tritone. If I play a B flat minor chord now, so here was E minor. And let's listen to B flat minor. That is about as evil as a single chord change can get. Going from a minor chord, jumping up a tritone or down a tritone to get to another minor chord. And if you tried singing melodies on top of this, really cool little haunted, floating, like soulless. Imagine this with like a theremin on top of it. That is a classic Halloween sound, and really all you need is a root and a tritone, building a minor triad off of each one of those. The last chord I want to talk about is the use of cluster chords. And a cluster chord is pretty much any chord that you can't call by a name because it's got too many notes in it. So imagine you had a chord like that had an E in it, and it had an F in it, and it had a uh, D sharp in it. So these are three chromatic notes right there, a little chromatic cluster, and all on their own, really harsh really unsettling. This is like psycho killer stuff. Extremely suspenseful. And once you have a chromatic cluster like that, you can kind of throw in any note with it and it's going to work. So what if I just throw a D underneath that? Okay, yeah, that's pretty ugly. And maybe just throw in, um, you know, I'll put a, a, how about a B? So this is the kind of stuff that gives people nightmares. This is terrorizing music. And of course, think outside of your instrument. If you start layering this on the piano or especially strings, I really like using these kind of cluster chords with strings and a nice little crescendo. Great way to creep people out. Now I just want to touch on a few topics here. Why are these chords so creepy? I can't really explain that. That seems more of a topic for Adam Neely. He does a lot of videos on the psychology of music as well. I can say that culturally we've been conditioned to hear and feel these chords as creepy because they've been used so often in creepy scenarios, especially the minor major seventh chord right there. I mean, almost every spy movie has one of these chords in it. So when we hear that chord, we're thinking back to spy movies that we've seen. So that is one element of making it creepy. Now, if you were planning on writing some scary music using some of these chords, I want to give you a little bit of advice. The chords themselves are pretty unsettling, but really what's going to make it really spooky is what you do with those chords. Arranging things in a lower register has a tendency to sound a little foggier and a little bit more ominous. You know, if you play all these chords on a ukulele or like a mandolin, they're going to lose a little bit of that scary bite because you're in this very, very high, bright, happy register. You also want to be thinking about what instruments are you going to be playing these kind of chords on. Me personally, I think certain instruments are just way scarier than others. I think the hurdy-gurdy is terrifying. I think that a theremin sounds really, really creepy. And I think a nylon string is scarier than a steel string guitar. I feel there's a lot of these bright resonances on, on a steel string guitar that kind of go away when you're on this muddled uh, nylon string guitar. So keep in mind that the quality of your instrument and the quality of the note you're playing is going to really have an impact on if something is scary or not. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy this video, please thank my Patreon supporters for making it possible. If you'd like to join them, you can. There's links below in the description. But if you can't do that, a like, comment, subscribe is good enough for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.